big changes ahead for one of the key metrics for getting into college. The SAT exam is going completely digital and will be shortened from three hours down to two. Now, a couple of things will stay the same. There's a verbal section and a math section, and a perfect score will still be 1,600. But bottom line, this is another major change to a test that has become, well, less essential for getting admitted into college since the pandemic began. There's clearly a lot at stake for students, their families, and educational institutions. So we've asked Priscilla Rodriguez from the College Board, the nonprofit group that administers the SAT, as well as high school junior Natalia Cassia to join us. Priscilla, let's start with you because this goes beyond putting the current SAT on a digital platform. I know you've said that the College Board is really taking advantage of what delivering an assessment digitally makes possible. What do you mean by that? Well, first, thanks for having me. Um, and what we mean by that is by taking the SAT digital, there are a number of student and educator centered benefits and improvements we're able to make. So I'll give you a few examples. One you cited, uh, the test will be shorter. So from three hours currently to about two hours, students will be able to get their results back faster, which is really important for them as they make decisions about college and, and their post high school plans. And we're gonna be able to be way more flexible with high schools who give the SAT to their students. And that's really important. I, I just wanna stress a point here, which is that 60% of all students who take the SAT now take it through our program called SAT School Day. So this is a program where a school, a district, or even an entire state pays for their students, usually juniors, to take the SAT free of charge to the students in the school building during the school day. This is huge for access and equity, but as a paper and pencil test that has to circle the globe and go to millions of students and has to be really secure, we've had to be quite rigid in how and when schools can give school day. This completely changes that. They're gonna to get to decide the day, the time, how to group their students. And we think this will be a real boon for again, that access and equity, the chance to take the SAT for yeah. every student, regardless of their background. Well, Natalia is a student who took this test. Natalia, you participated in the November global pilot of this new test. Tell me what it was like for you. What did you notice about some of the key differences? Did it seem easier, harder? How did you take the test? Give me, give me the lowdown. Hello, so um, I felt like the test was a lot more shorter, especially, and concise. Um, the questions at hand were a lot shorter and I felt like, I felt as though I could answer the questions a lot faster than the written portion of the SAT. And you'll be applying to colleges next year because you're a junior right now. I'm just wondering, what do you think will be uh, the major factor in determining whether you'll submit your scores? Um, it honestly really, um, it not only depends on my SAT score, but it depends, um, I guess, what I want to do. And um, I guess everything um, I'm doing right now kind of determines where I'm going to go. I feel like that could really help. Well, going back to you, Priscilla, I want to talk about the changes to the SAT. This is the third major overhaul of the SAT in the past 20 years. During that time, it seems that in some cases, the SAT has become a bit less relevant. 1,800 schools have made the test optional, including Harvard. Uh, what specifically about these changes make the test more relevant to those universities that have said, we're not even really going to look at this score and determining who gets to come to our school? A uh, few things I'll say on that. The first is we, we're always listening and learning both to students and again, the schools who administer the, administer the SAT and going digital is gonna allow us to address so much of what they've been telling us over the years. So that's this is really the next step in that evolution. When it comes to colleges and we've been engaging with them as we've been preparing for these changes, they tell us that the SAT is still and continues to be a vital part of their holistic admissions process, right? It's one piece of what they're looking at as they look at students. And so in a world that is largely test optional as it is today, right? And that, that was really spurred by the pandemic, we are focused on making the SAT the best possible option for students like Natalia, right? We want it to be less stressful, a shorter test day, a more clear measure of the core reading, writing, and math skills that are necessary for readiness for college and importantly, readiness for career. And when colleges view SAT scores in context, right? So they consider where a student lives, where a student learns, 
it helps them find students they otherwise may not have. I lived that personally. Um, I'm first generation American. My parents moved to the US with very little by way of financial resources. And the PSAT and the SAT were what opened my eyes and my mind to what could be possible. And they are what allowed colleges and scholarship organizations to reach out to me, ones that I never thought would be interested in a student like me. That's true for millions of students every year. So test optional allows students to take the test, see how they did, decide if they wanna practice and try again, if they're happy and want to submit the score, or if they ultimately choose to not submit the score. Um, and it's powerful. And I think it's really important that we preserve that choice. Students want it. 83% of students we survey have consistently told us they want the option to submit their score. And so that's the reason, Natalia, why I asked you what will make you determine whether to submit the scores or not, because clearly as a junior, you don't have a lot of time on your hands. You have to pick between extracurricular activity or studying for your existing tests or studying for a standardized test. I know that uh, this is around the time that you would normally be taking the SAT or ACT. Uh, spring of junior year is coming up. What are you hearing from your friends? How are you preparing for this exam, knowing that um, in two years it could be very different? Uh, given that the SAT is going digital and more schools are choosing to go test optional? Um, I see that as a good thing, honestly. In two years from now, I feel like students will have the option to take, um, I guess, a better approach for them if they'd like. Um, but knowing that I'd probably be missing out is kind of sad. <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah, Natalia, I, I'm curious. I remember, and Scarlett and I talk about our personal high school experiences all the time because it is so traumatic, so my heart is with you. Um, I, I put a lot of pressure on myself because I kind of felt like the score I got on my SAT would determine whether I could afford college. A lot of the scholarships I applied to only you know, looked at students who had a certain number, for example. Um, are you putting that pressure on yourself for a high SAT score, or does it feel like, given some of the changes that we've talked about today, does that number feel like less of a consequential factor in determining your education future? Yeah, given in today's world right now, knowing that SAT scores are now optional in some colleges um, and that more options are being provided, I feel as though I'm like less stressed about my future and what I can achieve. Um, but it still puts emphasis on what I can do versus um, what may, like what, I may have trouble in, for example. So. That makes sense. Another thing that we should point out is that the uh, digital SAT goes public in the US in 2024, but it goes digital outside the US in 2023. So Priscilla, I'm, I'm curious why there are different rollouts. And I wonder whether over time the SAT will become a more valuable tool for evaluating international students rather than students inside the US like Natalia, because um, internationally, it provides some kind of standard lens by which to judge, through which to judge uh, students from different backgrounds. That really is the power of the SAT overall. So certainly internationally, it does exactly that, right? For U.S. colleges and universities who may not know uh, high schools in all these different countries, they can, again, they can see and find these really talented students who want to come to the U.S. for college. But the same is true within the U.S. There are 25,000 high schools in this country. They all have different course offerings and grading policies. So again, where a student feels that their test score is a good reflection of what they know and what they can do, and they put it forward in their application, we hear from colleges and they're, they're saying it publicly to students and families too. That's a really helpful and useful data point for them to put next to high school GPA, next to whatever activities um, students may be involved in. And so again, that's really where we're focused on making sure that the SAT is the best possible, the least stressful option it can be, and that we make it available anywhere and everywhere a student wants that option and I, that choice. I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, will it become less relevant to domestic students like Natalia who are applying to colleges in the U.S. and where the college admissions directors might know a little bit more about her school, for instance, uh, County High School in South County High School in Virginia than opposed to, as opposed to a high school in uh, Venezuela, for instance? There, I'll say there, I mean, what the data is showing us so far, right, two years in, but what the data is showing us so far is not only, as I mentioned, 83% of students say they, they want the option to put that score forward, um, but also um, millions of students are still taking the SAT, right? It's been optional for two years. In fact, more students in the class of 2022, so they're seniors now, have taken it 
than last year's class. The numbers are going up. That is partly, of course, as schools and communities have found ways mm -hmm. to reopen uh, throughout COVID, but it speaks to students' desire to show what they know and what they can do. And with test optional, the power is really in their hands, mm. right? To decide if they want to put it forward or not. And that's again, where I view our responsibility. For Let's so give students the best tool to show what they know what they can do. And then they'll make a great decision for themselves with their families and with the teachers and adults around them. Oh, I'm looking at that student filling in bubbles and it's giving me PTSD. I know. I'm so glad that the, the students of today, I guess, don't have to do, deal with that for the digital option. Priscilla, final quick question for you. To excel in the test, you've got to prep, right? And ideally, you're able to pay for a tutor. Of course, not everyone can do that, and not even everyone can afford the test books, right? The prep books, rather. Is the move to digital an effort to address some of the inequality that is a natural part of the standardized test practice? So back in 2015, we developed a partnership with another nonprofit, Khan Academy, um, and we developed uh, the first ever free personalized online um, digital SAT practice mm -hmm. called Official SAT Practice on Khan Academy. So that was 2015. Since then, it has become the number one way that students prepare for the SAT, period, wow. more than combining all paid test prep. And we did that for exactly the reasons you mentioned. We don't, there shouldn't be inequities in practice and preparation for the SAT. It's a test of the core reading, writing, and math skills that students learn in high school. But there was, there was this inequity in access. I experienced it personally as a student. I couldn't take classes that uh, my peers were taking. I also couldn't buy the book. I checked it out from my local library. Mm -hmm. I remember that viscerally. And this partnership with Khan Academy, which continues through this transition, and in fact, we're going to make free, full length digital SAT practice tests available on the digital testing application that students will use okay. so they can actually simulate test day, really? full test on the test player. Yeah. Um, and, and that's really, again, that commitment to making it possible for every student to feel confident yep. when they walk in. Really appreciate you sharing that, Priscilla. Thank you so much. It reminds me, I ended up on SAT prep TikTok last night, so I guess there are always new options for learning and prepping for this SAT test. SAT prep TikTok, that is a new one. I had yes. not heard of it. <laughs> Priscilla Rodriguez, really appreciate it. Vice President of College Readiness Assessments at the College Board, and of course, Natalia Casio, student from South County High School in Lorton, Virginia. Good luck to you for the rest of the year. Thank you both so much.